Hello, so today we'll take a look at creating an off canvas menu using CSS only. So to start, we have a page with a navigation and main content ready. So we will first look at the sidebar here. Let's go ahead. I have left um, the CSS inline, so just we can go fast. So let's target the aside element first using the CSS here. We'll give it a background color of gray, uh, some grayish color. Let's give the text, the font, a white color. And let's give it an initial width of 40%. This is arbitrary. You can use any width you want depending on your design. But let's give it a margin left of minus 40%. So essentially, we're going to hide it to the left of the screen. Let's float it to the left. Let's float it to the left. Give it a height of 100%. And finally, to prevent the animation to be jumping, we're just going to give it a position absolute. So when I save that, it disappears from the screen here. I'm using live reload uh, just for the sake of speed. Um, that's for another tutorial. So let's go to the section element, which houses our main content. For the section, we'll do pretty much the same with a width of 100%, a height of 100% as well. But this time, we're going to float it to the right, and we're going to give it a margin right of 0 to start with. That's basically it for the section to get us started. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add a checkbox at the top here. And anytime we click on that checkbox, the navigation is going to come into view. And when we click again, it's going to go out. So um, we'll add it just right before the wrapper element. So let's add here the input and give it a type of checkbox. Let's give it an ID of, of canvas. The ID is going to be used by label to target it later on and a class of toggle. Since that's essentially what is it going to be doing. Let's save that and we can see that it's part of our page now, but when we click, nothing happens. So we want to target it, the state when it's checked, get, uh, shows the navigation. When it's unchecked, hide the navigation back. So how are we going to do that? The input and the wrapper are side by side. The wrapper comes right after it. So we're going to use the CSS adjacent selector. Let's just use the class first since we gave it a class of toggle. And the plus sign means the one that comes right after it. So if we have a container named wrapper, not wrapper, <laughs> wrapper that comes right after, and we're going to target the side element, which is our sidebar inside of it. And we're going to give it a margin left of zero. It was 40%. Minus 40% is at zero. But let's just make sure that we add the state here, which is checked. So if we save this and it refreshes our browser, you see that now we're seeing the navigation coming into view. But the content just stays in place. So let's take care of the content now. Let's copy this, paste it below. And just change the end here to be section now. And this time around, we're going to target the right margin since this element was floated to the right and give it a negative margin of 40%. So hide the main content 40% to the right. So let's do that. Come here and you see we have our initial effect in 
pretty sweet. So now let's make it pretty. Now at the top of our section, let's add a label that is gonna have the icon for the main menu. So let's have a label here. And we're gonna use off canvas inside of the four property that targets the ID here with that's how we create the link between this label and this input checkbox. Let's just give it a class of toggler, why not? Let's just give it a class of toggler. Inside of that, um, we can add a span with a class of nav icon. And um, that's essentially what we need for the markup. And we can make it a little pretty here by just making sure it's a new row. So let me just wrap this around. A container and a row so it shows nice and easy here pretty cool okay now let's just do a little CSS for the label and for the nav icon for the label we give it a class of toddler and I just want it the hit area to be as wide and as tall as the label width and height. To do that, I'm gonna give it uh, a display inline block. And let's give it a cursor of pointer, indicating that we can click on it. Now for the nav icon, we will give it a width of 28 pixel, which is plenty, I think, for the desktop. Height, same thing. of 28 pixels and we'll give it a background image so the image that I'm using is called nav icon that PNG and let's make sure it doesn't go over let's do no repeat but I know that the image is bigger than 28 by 28 and just to make sure it shows I can use the background size rule and use cover. One other thing that is important is a span element is an inline element. To make sure that it shows, we will give it a display of block. So if we refresh, we have our button that is showing right here now. When we click, you see that the check, the input, the toggle gets checked here. So the label is able to target it because we gave it the off canvas, off canvas uh, attribute four that is the same ID as our toggle element here. Pretty neat. So now next, one thing that you might register is when we are in this state, the only way that we can get back is by clicking here which is okay on a desktop environment but for um, mobile or something smaller we would essentially want this entire area to be clickable so we can go back to the initial state so how we're gonna do that is let's go back to the top of our section element and add another label in there this time there's no need to wrap it. Uh, let's just uh, target the same input element. Let's give it a class of big label because that's going to be a big hit area. And that's pretty much all we need to do for this one. So now we can hide the check button because we don't need it anymore. We know that we can trigger it with the labels. And I'm gonna put the big label here too. And initially I want them to just not show. 
there we go so let's just make sure that we still have what we had earlier good now for the big label I want to give it a width of 100% because it's going to be the whole content that's going to become a big button. Same thing with the height. Giving it a position absolute. And let's give it a cursor of pointer. But it's still not going to show at this point because this rule says display none. What we want essentially is when it's in a toggle state, then it's visible or at least it's hittable. So we're going to copy this rule that we had earlier, put it down here, and add the big label class at the end. And all we need to do at this point is make sure it's display block. So now when we hit it, you see that the whole content is clickable, not the navigation, just the content area where big label lives. So when I hit it, it goes back. All right, lastly, let's add a transition. This is pretty jerky. It jumps from one state to the other. We want to add a transition property here so it smoothly goes from left to right. To do that, since a side and section are sharing um, the same transformation property or transition, should I say, because the margins are affected, let's just target that right now. So we will add a side and section. And um, we're going to go ahead and target the transition property. So since margin is what we are after, we will put margin in there. Let's give it a half second to complete. And let's just use an ease um, statement so it's very smooth when it like um, get to the end of the animation. So let me save this, get back here, and voila, you see now that we have a very smooth animation going from left to right. So we can change this, you can make it slower, you can make it faster depending on the browser. So to do that, let me just uh, select them all. Let's make it a little slower so you can see. And let's put it at one second now. When I click, you see that it takes a little longer. And you can play with the ease property here. We can do ease in. We can try ease out. or even ease in and out. So it starts fast, slows down, and finishes fast, or the other way around. So let's just put it at ease in, out. Mm, very subtle, but I don't think I need to put a whole second on it. So I'm gonna just go back to the half second that I had earlier. Pretty neat. 
So that's all we had for today. I uh, hope you find it valuable and I can't wait to see what you're going to do with this. The code is going to be available on GitHub. So thanks for watching again and until next time. Cheers.